Okay, so you put out your hummingbird feeders and you got lucky enough and they started to finally come. Um, but now you're noticing they're fighting and these are not nice fights. They're getting really close to each other with those beaks. It is crazy. You even put out a second hummingbird feeder and you notice that they are still fighting. So I worked really hard to put this video together to explain why, and it, and it goes beyond just protecting nectar. There's more to it than that. So I'm gonna go into a lot of detail behind why they're fighting, but then also, you know, is it bad? Is it dangerous that they're fighting? And then are there things that we can do to prevent them from fighting? And I'm sure at this point you've tried a lot too, but is there something else that you can do? So we're going to go into all of that in this video. At the top of the list, it is protecting nectar. That is very key and very critical to why they fight. Um, and again, it is really crazy when you watch them fight because they exhaust so much energy doing it. But the reason they're fighting too for that nectar is because their entire lives really are built for that nectar rich lifestyle. A hummingbird's metabolism is incredibly rigid. It's also amazing too, the, the way that they use sugar and the way it fuels their muscles and how they can convert it into fat and everything. It's incredible. So their entire metabolism is framed around a nectar rich lifestyle that doesn't mean that nectar is the only things that they eat they do need protein and they get that from bugs but nectar is vital to their survival so a lot of it is rooted in instinct i've got this this resource and i don't want anybody else to have it makes sense and i have read comments where people just think that they enjoy fighting like they're playing or something like that there is no play involved this is instinct that they're going on and this is a survival mechanism that they're going on i'm not saying that it's completely fatal all the time but it's not it's not play um, and they're definitely not going to exhaust energy on play like that either so this is this is not cute this is not um fun for them or anything like that hummingbirds are biologically wired to defend their territory and and the resources in that territory it's not just nectar they eat bugs too and they need shelter and everything else so there's that involved i think what drives us crazy though is when we're watching and it's like well i have like 16 feeders out and they're still just fighting so again it kind of begs the questions why why are they still doing this despite the fact that there's plenty of nectar around the thing that you have to keep in mind is it's not just about the nectar they're wired to protect the territory and the resources on that territory and that can encompass more than the flowers and the nectar that you put out but the bugs and the availability of bugs there the amount of cover and perches available um, for females they can get pretty territorial too if there's a nesting site so if they're nesting near a feeder they might start bullying some of the other hummingbirds because they're trying to protect that whole territory another thing you might be familiar with but it's a little more subtle in hummingbirds is this idea of pecking order and this is the case with hummingbirds there are sometimes individuals that are more dominant than others and are going to sort of bully and so that is that scene where it's like again i have 16 feeders and this one hummingbird just goes around and bullies and chases all the other ones off. That's a dominance thing that could be in play. Um, and so he's like, hey, this is, this is all mine. Um, and you can only have it if I let you have it. Another big factor behind all of this is neurological and hormonal. And this I don't think gets talked about enough, but studies have shown that there are neurological and hormonal pathways that regulate aggression in individual birds, and that can have a key influence. And I've noticed this with many different species of birds. So it's not just your hummingbirds, but um, in the past with bluebirds, I've had a male, he's pretty chill and laid back and everything. And then I had um, later a new, male occupy the nest and he would not let any bird get near he protected that nest box and an oriole was kind of hanging out in the magnolia and that bluebird was not having it this is also going to be the case with hummingbirds too where there are just going to be some that are more aggressive and part of that is their hormones and their biochemistry that's involved so that's something that you have to keep in mind and the why behind this is so important because when we understand why it can help make us feel a little more at ease about the situation that a lot of this is nature at play a lot of this is a survival instinct and then some of it is just things that we can't control it's just their biochemistry at play so those i think that information is really important it still drives us crazy though because when you're watching 
you know that they need to get that nectar. And when they're too busy chasing each other, they're not getting any nectar and they're flying so fast. So there is an energy expense. The good news is that they can kind of sneak nectar when they need to, and they're not always exhausting everything that they've consumed. Now, with that said, there have been wildlife rehab facilities that have reported dehydration and exhaustion from fights and things like that. Um, so, yeah, it's not ideal. Um, there are some things we can do, but it is kind of tough to, to watch them fight like this. So if you've ever watched them up close and everything, you know, those, those sharp beaks are crazy and they, like, they're going after each other. For us, it looks like it's too close for comfort, but with hummingbirds, they're incredibly agile. And what looks like too close for comfort for us is not necessarily too close for a hummingbird. They're a lot smaller, so <laughs> those distances are a lot different in their eyes too. But accidents and injuries can still happen. And what I would say is, whether you're feeding hummingbirds or any bird or just, you know, love birds, make sure you have uh, knowledge of where your local rehabber is. And so if there is an accident, don't try and help them yourself. That usually does not end well. Um, instead, call a local licensed rehabber or, you know, find a connection um, for something like that. So definitely, like you may, after this video, want to Google that really quick and just go, okay, I know where that is. Also, let's say it's two hours away. Don't let that discourage you because some uh, rehabbers have volunteers that will help with transport and everything. So don't let that intimidate you when it comes to helping an injured animal. So let's talk about fixes. Um, you know, number one, have another feeder out, but that typically does not help anyone. So we'll get into um, some other tips here. So the second tip would be um, don't cluster all of your feeders in one area. You definitely want to space them out. So I think I don't remember if it was the Audubon or Cornell, but saying that you want them at least 10 to 15 feet apart, that's some decent spacing. Um, but I know a lot of you are watching this and you're thinking, well, I've already done that and they're still fighting like crazy. So blocking the line of sight um, really helps. I forget her name, it's Robbie and somebody else. It's a gardening YouTube channel, but she does so much with hummingbirds. Uh, she has made little blinders to go and she teaches how to make those blinders for your nectar feeders. Um, so you could you could also check that video out. I'll put a link in the description, but but really like your yard if, if you have enough um, plant life and vegetation in your yard, you could just space the feeders out or at the very least front yard backyard side to side. Um, those are four <laughs> areas of blind spots right there. Another thing is to experiment with different types of feeders and um, so what could happen and, and I've noticed this with birds is that they get hooked on a certain thing and maybe it's a certain design or it's a certain color whatever it is they're hooked to it and so if you have all of the same feeders that might be an issue too so you might have a bully hummingbird and he is just so attracted to those nectar feeders that he's not letting anybody touch them so if you try some different designs and different styles that may help you could also try a saucer style feeder where um the basin is below the ports and then you have the gravity feeder where the ports are here and the the basin or the you know the container for the nectar is above and the gravity feeds it down another thing to do is experiment with different heights so you could have some feeders that are way up high some that are down low you can hang some from trees and then from shepherd's hooks so try to experiment with different placements while you don't want to group or cluster all of your feeders you could do some that are clustered and some that are single and just kind of experiment with that. I haven't tried this myself, but I have heard of people trying this is, you'll have some feeders that remain always in one place, but then other ones you'll rotate to different areas. So the bully hummingbird can't quite get a fix or a lock on it and that lets some of the other hummingbirds find it and get a sip when they get a chance and then another thing is just planting native plants that hummingbirds like the audubon has a tool um, if you google audubon plants for birds you can filter for hummingbirds i have a tutorial on that actually too um, but it'll give you a list of native plants for your specific area and where to find them too and so you could plant those types of plants that they're attracted to so they're not just stuck on the nectar look at your yard and don't think about it as just your nectar feeders. Think about it in terms of a habitat. What else can you incorporate to help the native bugs thrive? Because 80% of a hummingbird's 
insect diet is native bugs and native plants play host to native insects. So what can you do to enhance the habitat within your backyard so that it's not just nectar, but other resources are available. There's cover available, there's bugs available, um, there's perches available, things like that. So look at the habitat. And then finally, uh, this is the answer that you're not going to like, but we have to come to terms with the fact that fighting is part of their instinct and it's part of their mentality and it is going to happen. And sometimes it's really hard to watch and it drives us crazy because there's such a frantic little animal to begin with and then they burn all this energy on fighting and it, it's just nuts. But coming to terms with the fact that it's part of their neurology, it's part of their biochemistry, it's part of their instinct and this is deep... Um, and just kind of accepting the fact that they are gonna fight is really important. There's no one remedy. Nobody has like a, a solution that really works 100%. There's a few people I've seen in, in comments from different resources who have gotten kind of lucky, but the majority of people comment in, I've tried this, I've tried that, and they still fight. This is gonna happen. Um, and so what we wanna do is just make our yard as hospitable to them as we can and provide places where they can perch, places where they have cover so they can find rest. And if they are getting exhausted, they can go to another tree and just kind of take a, take a beat for a minute and, <laughs> and go back into it. Maybe they'll have some luck with the feeder next time. Um, those hummingbird swings, I used to thought, think that those were a gimmick um, but no, they're really important. And so you could hang those in branches and um, on shepherd's hooks and things like that. And that can also really help out too. So in the end, we're kind of like, we're recognizing the fact that they are going to fight. That is part of their nature. That is part of who they are. And your own observations are going to help you with how you experiment with things in your backyard. By the way, check out the Nest Hollow website for some resources on hummingbirds. I have a really pretty download for some best practices when it comes to feeding. I also have some hummingbird feeders that I've tested and I really like and I would recommend that. So I'll put some of those resources in the links as well.